I guess I'm gonna have to call your daddy now. And I was like, what are you trying to say, honey? What are you trying to say? She's like, we're pregnant, babe. Oh, I almost wrecked my car. I was so happy. Yeah. She hit you, didn't she? She, she beats me. <laughs> um, anybody knows Julia knows she's a scrapper. <laughs> I regret not eating the placenta. And I, what I typed in the notes was the pancreas. Because when, when at first I was like, I, you know, I regret not eating that pancreas. And I was like, wait, that's not the word for it. Have you ever had breast milk? No. I want to try it. I mean, now's the time. <laughs> Duh, but like, <laughs> you ready? Let's get it. Absolutely not. That's, <laughs> oh boy. Welcome, folks, back. Welcome back, folks, to another. Welcome, what the? I failed. Let me live my life. Welcome <laughs> back, folks, to another episode of That's How You Feel. I'm excited to be here. As always, I am your host, and I'm the only host here today. My name is Caleb. I will fight you. I'm joined here by my co-host. <laughs> my name's Levi. <laughs> ah, got a hot episode planned this week for you guys. Hot episode. We're talking about fatherhood. Fatherhood. First of all, <laughs> this is a silly question to ask. But how was your day? <laughs> <laughs> How was your day, man? My how, day, you, how was your week? My week's been great. I um, just got back from LA. <laughs> Actually, no, you would Okay, I'm okay. Kidding, so, no. little, little fun fact: we shoot these episodes kind of together. We shoot a couple episodes together, so we have you know time to edit and put things out. By the time this one comes out, you'd have been back from LA for a while. Yeah, but we're actually filming this before you go. No, to LA, my day was but... actually good. So I had a great day at work. I had a couple of admins. How uh, was L.A. though, man? L.A. was great, man. Oh, what was I, your favorite thing? My favorite thing. Uh, just being there with my wife. Oh. No kids. Uh, Disneyland was I. Uh, ooh, sir. We're going to this restaurant, sir. Have you ever? You, no, I've never even heard speak, of it. We talked about reality shows last episode. We did. So there's a. It's trash reality, but it's Vanderpump sure. Rules. Have you ever heard of it? I've heard of it, never seen it. Okay, so I I got hooked on it a long time ago. A bunch of people, you know, peer pressure. Mm -hmm. Then my wife started watching it, and we're sucked in. And it's you watch it too. Ugh. Yeah, she does. It's good. It's good drama. Scandal, I like her scandal a little ball. bit less now. Now that she watches that, Dumb. like just a little bit less. Man, now. she's the best part of me. But the she the, is. But like, yeah, to know that she but watches that now. Quit I'm talking. Like, nah. The um. <laughs> restaurant that shows based around is sir and it's in la and west hollywood so we're going there um because or you went there because this is an old episode now yeah i went there and the fried goat cheese balls were actually good which i can say that because i had those in vegas okay good for you anyways question um, of the day or do you uh, you got something else you want to talk about yeah do you know what the question today is yeah what's your favorite girl scott cookie easy lemonades but pop them in the freezer and they okay there you go there you go i like i don't know what they're called they're just like the peanut butter ones that are covered in chocolate peanut butter patties if that's what they're called i think they have another name but they're peanut butter patties i actually got okay or so are they that, was, that, that was a quick question i got another question for you how many Krispy cream donuts do you think you could eat before it was like a problem i don't like Krispy cream okay what what donut <laughs> do you like lamar's <laughs> Oh, that, okay. Okay, fine. Lamar's are like, there's a real division between Krispy Kreme versus Lamar's. I think isn't Lamar's like only like local to like KC. There's like like yeah. It's not, it's not like nationwide. Anyway, no. Okay, fine. So Lamar's donuts. How many Lamar's donuts could you eat just like without feel like? Let's just forget about like the moral embarrassment, like the shame of like people knowing you ate this many. How many could you eat if nobody ever knew about it? So to be honest, mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm not a huge donut person. Mm -hmm. I will say I could throw down some Lamar's glazed donuts. Right. How many could you eat before like you were like, I need to and stop? It's not a competition because if it's a competition, I can eat as many as I want. Okay. If it's a competition. I'm winning. How many could you eat before you had to like chill out? Gosh, it's going to make me sound fat. I don't know. Six? No, that's way too many. <laughs> <laughs> I that's a, I don't know. I, Before you were like, I'm full. I need to not eat eat another donut. Three. That's cute. Five, four. What about you? I don't know. Solid dozen. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's no shame. Like with without any like the societal like looking at me like without like someone judging me. 
12 without, I wouldn't even break a sweat. I would feel terrible what? after, but I would, yeah. 12. What is your favorite Donut place? <sighs> Any of them. I don't care. <laughs> There's a difference. I'm Chris, a fat kid Krispy Kreme has those like. They're so good. They're, if they're fresh, they're good. But um, Lamar's has those like yeast donuts, the one that's got that line. It's nice, big, and fluffy. Yeah. I don't think I've never bitten into a bad donut. I've never been like, oh, this is nasty. No, every donut is good everywhere. You know, like, left out donuts are good. I don't, it, it, Casey's I don't donuts care. ain't bad. Actually, Casey's donuts are bad. <laughs> I take it back. I, I, but is it because they're cake donuts? I love a cake donut. But what I'm saying is, Casey's is like the bottom tier donut, like bottom tier. Like Quick me, Trip is, whew. see, and I'm not big on Quick Trip. Mm. Casey's is nostalgia for me because as a they're, kid, they're, I would always get Quick Casey's Trip's donuts, chocolate covered donut. Like it's like a like a glaze without the glaze, but it's got ch- like dipped in chocolate. Boy, oh man, those are that's so right. Cute. Also, Dunkin's way overrated. Dunkin Coffee is trash. Oh yeah, I agree. Tra- I get like I go there sometimes. <laughs> I didn't know you're doing that. I get I like I'll go to like I I go to Dunkin' like it's like like it's like it's like the little cousin that your mom said take with you. Like I'll like mm-hmm. right, let me go to Dunkin'. Yeah, let me give them a shot. I've never been like happy. I went. No. I, I'm always I'm like why even if it's go, like, like a like a sweet drink that they like think looks good. They don't know what trash. they're doing over there. Like no. the people there are like it's their first day. Which and but there's a lot of people that love Duncan. Oh, I, I know I don't some get Duncan it. stands, and I'm just like, bro, did I, did I say that word right? Stands like a fan. Like I stand on Dunk. Maybe not. I have never heard. Let's that Let's get in my into life. the topic. All this right. This is how I know I'm getting old. Yeah, you are. I'm. I'm out here. <laughs> Whipping and naying it. Never mind. Uh, hey, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, as always, we. You know what? Also, for those of you that have already done that, thank you. We are seeing your comments. I meant to like read off some of my favorites. Abby Stark said our, our podcast was lame, <laughs> so but that, that she would also be checking back in. So cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's the only one that I can think of right now. There's a lot of people that have commented uh, the feedback so far. Like, like I said, we shot a bunch of these so right now the first episode is out and we're shooting was this episode six right now yeah yeah so we're, we're this is episode six so we're either ahead or behind on the comments we're behind so s- still i know we're like ep- six episodes in but i there do want to say thank you and we started to have a little bit of a stretch but i mean there'll be a time where we're just a few episodes behind so so to those of you that already commented for episodes one through five thank you so much for that Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the reviews. Uh, also, we've gotten um, some reviews on, I've noticed Apple and Spotify. Um, cool. So I haven't I, seen those. They're all five stars. Tight. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen them. I haven't Caleb seen them. Caleb really wants to be famous, y'all. So I do. Trying yep. to help him get there. I don't know if I'm much help, but. Yep. So let's get into the topic. <laughs> so we're I talking about fatherhood today. So fatherhood. Yes. Cause you're a new, you're a new father. New dad. Well, my, I mean, he's four months old. He's four months old as of like a couple days ago. Yeah. So yeah, he's four months he's old. He's so cute. He's big, dude. You know, it, I love when I come over like the other day and you're like, here, go to Uncle Levi and I could just keep him calm. Bro, don't uh, like, don't be afraid to ask to hold my kid. Like if you see me and my child, you can come get him. Like you can come get him right now. Like, do you I, ever feel like though, when someone's holding your kid, like you have to take him back because that's a burden to them? Do you no. ever work? Okay. No, you, no, you hold him for as long as you want. I, I, well, okay. Yeah, actually I do now. Like, cause I feel like they're whole, I feel like they're holding them too long. It's not like, give me back my kid. It's not that. Yeah. It's like, let me, you can give my kid back. I know you, cause uh, but, but truthfully, I feel like a lot of people just want to get that, like, like a hug, like, oh, uh, okay. Take him back now. But to my friends that actually do love to hold my kid, like, I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for the, everybody that's it's been- truth. That's been there for my child and your children. Like, you know, f- for holding, bro, I, I'm tired of holding my son. Like, I think you I just love, gave out a praise. I did. Man. Oh, man. I did. Mark Th- this down your calendar. You. you, for y'all that are holding my son, <laughs> I appreciate it so much. 
I can't. I can't wait to get him up. Like not like well, give him up. Like get rid of him. No, when I get it. To like, get a break. When I when people see my son, oh, let me hold. Him. I'm like, yeah, come, hurry up. Like yeah. come get him. Like I'm tired of holding him. He's now, heavy. He's dense. The reason why I asked that is because I like whenever I had babies too. Same thing. It felt the same. Like I love when people would hold him, but I also like if they were holding too long. I'm like, oh, they're probably annoyed, and so I'd like try to get him back. And I'll leave the room. I should. Yeah, I didn't do that. So, <laughs> um. Want to start off a little bit of journey to having kids. So, yeah, yeah. um, I have two kids. Yes, you do. You have one. One kid. So um, I have a daughter that's way. three and a half. You didn't hear me. Well. I said one on the way, but I was just playing. I was I was about, no, I paused because I was like, "Wait, what?" No, no, no. There's no announcement. I'm just I'm messing with you. We're gonna we're, we plan to have another one, but yeah, not right now. No, we're so we're done with two. Um, hey, but we have a three and a half year old daughter and a one and a half year old son. Mm-hmm. Um. And you have, I have a son, four month old son, yeah, four month old son. Yeah. So what? Um, <sighs> when you and your wife got married, like, what? When did kids become in the discussion? It was a discussion before we got married. Like what? Like a timeline wise. Um. So. Yeah. So it was like it was while we were even dating. I was just like, just so you know. I want kids, but we, we had had this, like, I had basically told this to her, like, as we, when we, when we established that we were a serious couple, like, Hey, we're like, I mean, that was already established before we even started that. Hey, I'm dating to be serious. Like, you know, I'm not dating for fun out here. Um, but like early on in, in the relationship, I was like, Hey, just so you know, I want kids. And she was like, great. I want kids too. Cool. Cool. So we get married and we, I don't, I think we had the conversation but she had said, hey, I want to be married for at least, I think, I think the word was six months. I think she said either it was six months that or a year and it. six months. Sure. <laughs> uh, so I think it was six months or a year and six months, but she just wanted to just, let's just be married. Let's just enjoy ourselves. Yeah. It might've been a year. I don't know. She gave a time frame of how long she wanted to just be married before we actually started to like try to have kids. Yeah. Uh, so whatever that time frame was. Came and went. Uh, she was on birth control. She got the little the little thing in her arm. She got that taken out. Um, after that time, whatever whatever that time frame was, she got that taken out. Um, and so yeah. And then after that, we started to try to have kids. We started. Uh, what's the what's the what's the best way to say it? You practiced a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we people had a lot people of- know how kids are made. Sure. Yeah, we practice a lot. Uh, so, I mean, do you want like, do you want me to tell the, like the whole story? Um, it doesn't matter. We you got time? Now or yeah, yeah, we do. Okay, so I'm gonna try to keep it as short as possible. Uh, so I don't even honestly, this is so sad because I don't know that I don't know the, the length of time, but from the implant being removed to actually like our son. There was, I, I want to say like almost a year and a half of us just trying to just get pregnant the old fashioned way where, and then like, I think a year had passed in, in that where she started looking at advice from her friends. Oh, check your temperature this day. Or, um, is there a full moon today? Like, and then she started like using like an app to like track, like ovulation, all that stuff, just to kind of see, like see our cycle and just see, Hey, these are going to be the best days. We did that for, I think almost a year and a half to two years. Um, from there we were like, something's going on. Like there's yeah. something that's just not, cause this is like the, the silly thing is, is that like you think because you're told this, at least for me growing up in like in the church, you're told if you have sex, you're going to get pregnant. And so I was expecting to get pregnant day one of this implant being out and then they were like oh no it takes like 60 days for that to wear off and i'm like okay bet so like literally the next month or the next two months come in i'm thinking boom like we're gonna have a kid here and so literally like every month was like are we having a kid are we having a kid and she's like no 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 i got my period and i'm like ah bummer so that was that became the norm just to get excited around the cycle and then like get let down and then get excited and then get let down and it, be, it it was it was tough, but like you you just that became the norm of just trying that and just being really hopeful, just because you know you know her birth control, you don't know how long yeah. that's in her system, so you know you really didn't get discouraged until like a year in, where it's like again, huh? Oh, I thought we'd have one by the end of this year, or I thought we'd have one by my birthday. I thought we'd be pregnant by this holiday. 
Um, and it starts to just drag out. And so then we started doing like the apps and stuff like that, like I said. Um, so the, I think it was almost like literally like two years in where we were like, let's talk to somebody. So, um, so did luckily, you go see like a doctor? Or? Uh, so luckily, I, I don't know how we found out, but my job had some insurance that was like very specific to like infertility. So we go, uh, she, she sets it all up cause she's just smart like that to just do stuff like that. And so she sets it all up, uh, talks to this person over the phone. Um, and he's like, Hey, let's just, let's just tell me about the journey. So we explain all of what we just did. Um, and they're like, okay, let's bring Emily in to test literally everything under the sun. So she goes back and forth to these tests and this is more just months. And then through this, we're still just practicing, trying to get, you know, trying to conceive and nothing's happening. And I, I, I couldn't tell, Emily could tell you a lot better than I could, but about how long she had to just go through these blood works, you know, these tests. Cause a lot of it's like, hurry up and wait. Okay. Hurry up. Mm-hmm. You got, you got like four days before your cycle to get this test done. Okay. You got two days after your cycle to get this test done. Mm. So it's a lot. I mean, so many tests over the course of just months. Yeah. Um, and what was, what was kind of interesting was like all her tests kept coming back like normal. And so we're just like, what's the matter? Uh, and then after her test came back normal, the doctor's like, well, let's take a look at Caleb. Let's get him in for some tests. And so I go in for some tests. Uh, they're like, okay, your blood work looks great. You have your, your testosterone's a little bit um, low. And I was like, that's why I can't put on muscle. <laughs> like, like an idiot. So <laughs> they're like, okay. So then they're like, hey, we want you to come in and give a semen sample. And I was like, okay, fine. So that comes back and they're like, bro, mm-hmm. it's you. And I was devastated. Mm. Because like that, like that it, as a man, I felt like I should be able to do this. And it was the what was the word? Cryptospermia was the word, which was basically like you have a low count. Yeah. And so how they explained it was is that in one drop. There should be like millions of these things. And the doctor said, in your entire sample, you had five moving. Mm. And he's like, out of that five, he said, he said, you had like five. And out of that five, like three were moving. And I was like, oh, wow. So I like, I came home and I was like, honey, I'm sorry. It's me. Uh, and it, it just, it crushed me. Because it's something that I've always wanted. I've always wanted to be a dad. And then again, I, obviously I'm like, what did I do to deserve this? Like God's punishing me. This is what I felt. And yeah. then, you know, I felt at, like a failure to my spouse because I'm like, I can't give you a kid. So, you know, there's th- these things just hit me from both sides. So they were like, the, the good thing is, is that your blood work shows that you should be able to produce this. And I'm like, well, Okay. And he says, but your sample said you didn't. So there's, there, there's a disconnect somewhere. We don't know. We, we might look at surgery going in and getting it ourselves and then bringing it out. And I was like, let's do that. And then so we couldn't do, there's, there's IVF and then there's another F1. It's like IVF or EVF or EMF. Yeah. One of the I don't two. know what it is, but I, yeah. The slang for the other one is like known as the turkey baster method. Yeah, that's right. I forget what it's called, but it's I don't I don't know the technical name, but it's like the turkey baster. So they said that one, that option is out. Our only option is IVF. So we agree to that, which is fine. So yeah, so the day of we get, we get it scheduled out cuz you know, they said your counts low whatever. Her she goes on hormones to produce more eggs, so they're going to do a big egg retrieval from her. They're going to take my sample, they're going to make some babies with that. I go in for mine and uh they're like, they, they, they had me give one more sample before my surgery. Yeah. They're like, hey, we just want you to come in and give one more sample. Um, and then you'll have your surgery scheduled the next day. I'm like, okay, fine. So I go in for my surgery the next day. Em comes with me because her egg retrieval is the next, like literally like the next hour. Uh, I go in and they say, hey, uh, what are you doing here? I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, your surgery got canceled. I was like, yeah, that's news to me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, they're like, no, um, your sample came back great. I was like, no, it didn't. 
that's why I'm here for the surgery. They're like, oh no, no, your sample came back great. You you don't need to have the the procedure. I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, oh, you had like 25 million in your in your sample. I was like, no, what are you talking about? She's yeah. like, wait, what's your name again? And I'm like, Caleb, what's your date of birth? And I gave her, and she's like, yeah, this is you. You're good. Yeah, you don't need to come in. This is your sample. Look, there's your number. They circled it. You're good to go. And so I walk out back into the main, into the lobby where Emily is sitting there waiting. She looks up and she's like, what's going on? I'm like, they don't need to do my surgery. She's like, yeah. what happened? And I'm like, my sample came back great. She's like, I want to talk to the doctor. <laughs> well, so, so no one called you at that point? Like, no. They said someone was, was supposed to call you last night and say you didn't have to come in, but nobody called us. So we woke up at like 5 a.m. for this 6 a.m. surgery. So she goes back to the doctor because M wants to hear it from her. And I'm, for, she's like, I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. So she's like, hey, no, he, he's good. You still have your egg retrieval here. Everything's going to be just, just fine. I'm like, okay, something's going on here. Okay. Maybe this is a good sign. So we did the egg retrieval. The fertilization process went great. They took like 17 eggs, which is like a ton. They successfully fertilized like, I think 12 or nine, um, not seven made it to like a great stage to be tested, like for genetically imbalances or whatever. And then we had like five. And so we had five great eggs. They were like, Hey, these are going to be great for potential humans, but whatever, whatever. Uh, we took one, transferred it in as soon as we could. And then it didn't work. And then we, and then now we're, now we're like really devastated because yeah. we're like, bro, like we did the right stuff. But like, Hey, you still got four more eggs. So I'm like, all right. And so then it's, an, it's more like, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. Which so, at that point you're probably already expecting defeat. Yeah. Cause I mean, but hopeful, but the, the chances of that is 66%. So I'm like, that's good. So the first one doesn't work. And we're like, okay, do the chances increase? And the doctor's like, no, it's still 66%. I'm just like, okay. So we do another one and the, uh, the, she has to go get tested. Like, so there's the transfer and then there's 14 days after the transfer. Um, she goes in and gets blood work to like confirm or, you know, confirm the pregnancy test. And so I was driving home from work. Uh, and she called me and I was like, Hey, what's up? Cause I'm, you know, she's like, Hey daddy. And I was like, what's up? What's going on? <laughs> she's like, I guess I'm gonna have to call you daddy now. And I was like, what are you trying to say? Honey? What are you trying to say? She's like, we're pregnant, babe. Oh, uh, I almost wrecked my car. I was so happy. Yeah. I, I think I, I don't, I don't think I cried, but I was ecstatic about just getting the news that we're going to, you know, expect a child. But as excited as I was about it, fear comes in. Like, because again, you could mm -hmm. miscarry. There's so many things that can go wrong in in that you know first trimester and now that he's here i'm still terrified like there's no happiness in it this. never i mean it never goes there's away. no happiness there's moments of like little joy but like i'm just like you could die any second yeah I mean, think about that like like yeah. in when my kid sleeps he's like a real peaceful sleeper sometimes but like if he's getting that good sleep he's he's snoring like his mom it's hilarious <laughs> <laughs> you just put her on blast like that bro my kid snores his mom snores too so i will that's the story of my of the uh, and the i will IVF say journey. you know i i walked through that journey with you kind of you did and seeing you in those steps and obviously i hadn't been in those shoes before mm -hmm. but like i hurt for you and i have other friends as well and i just yeah. i hurt and so i can remember seeing your devastation and honestly you just I mean, you're and rightfully so. You started to get more and more down just about everything in general. Yeah, man. Um, I, I got I got a friend of mine who they had they had one of my good friends. They've been trying to get pregnant. Uh, she's been able to get pregnant, but then they have miscarriages. Miscarriages, and I'm just, like, it breaks my heart to yeah. hear that. And so they are having to go. They've they've gone through the IVF process like the same thing that my wife did. You know, I just said my wife had 17 eggs. She got one. Mm. And they're expecting their daughter out of that one egg. Like, so, and it's just, it's been crazy. Cause like now he's like one of my good friends. He's very excited about it. And like he, the, the entire time, 
he's calling me like, and I'm literally like kind of talking him through each stage of like the testing process and just this, this waiting game. And he's like, how many eggs did you guys get? And I was like, we got 17. How many did you guys get? He's like, we got one. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Because yeah. even then the fertilization may not work. The, the blastaceous period, that five day germination period may not work. Uh, and then the transfer may not work. And he got one and it worked and he's expecting, he's expecting his kid, uh, in May. So like, I'm excited for him, but like, bro, it's, it's the, the journey that, that, that they have to go through. Like it's, it's tough. Yeah. No, I, um, I can't imagine. I just, I, like I said, I've walked well. You've walked well, up. I can't, now. Yeah. but like, it's just, it's, it's still like to go through that again. Like it, it, it's, it's so tough, but we talked about the first episode, how there's things in this podcast that we both can like some things you've, you know, dealt with in life that I haven't mm-hmm. and say, vice versa. Yeah. Um, and this is one where like, I can try to empathize and I do empathize, so not try mm-hmm. to, but I think it's until you've been in those shoes, you don't know the full story. Just like anything. True. Walk a mile in shoes and even walk in um, next to you through that journey, you and your wife um, and my other friends that are going through the same thing. Um, it just constant heartbreak for them. And it's, you don't even have words sometimes. Do you ever like with, with your two kids and like you have friends that, that are trying to conceive and trying to get pregnant. Do you ever feel guilty about being a parent? I do. So, y- <laughs> like, like, I feel I will, okay. Maybe guilty is not the right word, but I feel some type of way. Yeah, I feel a way. Like, I, like, I don't know what what to put to it. I wouldn't say so. Like, I've I've had a friend who's gone through IVF, and her biggest thing was always, "Why are there so many parents out here who are terrible parents that can have kids, and I want one so bad, mm-hmm. and I can't have one." Yeah. Um, man, I got a friend like that. That's what, um, that's what I kind of, Oh yeah. It would, it would break me and my wife's heart to like, to like each month, not conceive, not conceive. And then to hear like friends, Hey, we're pregnant. And I, I truly am. I really am happy for them. I'm like, great. Were y'all trying? They're like, Nope. Weren't even trying. I'm like, it's not fair. Yeah. Or like, like you said, like people that maybe like not good mothers or like bad parents. And it's like, my yeah. turn. Like you hear me, Lord, are you there? God, it's me, Margaret. Like, yeah, no, you, it's, you lose the understanding. And it's when you're in those periods, I always biggest turn, you know, phrase I'll ever say is in the waiting is the, in that, in the waiting period is always mm-hmm. the hardest thing to be in, in any situation. Yeah. Um, you good? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I actually, I, I want to, I, I like playing with the microphone. Okay. I'm, I, mean, I, I, I fidget. Okay. But, um, and obviously there may be you're going to be able to testify, testify, give testimony to others. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. And be able to share your story in that journey. Um, and I am, I'm excited for you in that, but also it, um, I hate that you had to go through that and that, you know, my other friends go through that who are still trying. Um, yeah, I'm very happy that you have your son because I will say, I already said it before, watching you become a parent has been great. Mm-hmm. Um, this is dope. Dad life is the best life. Yeah. So what what is different? Well, <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna flip the script real quick. Sure. So because that way we can answer the same questions. So for me and my wife, timeline wise. Yeah. Tell me about your. T- <laughs> I don't have my notes. I'm sorry. No, you good. That was my bad. Um, but I also didn't want to be like back to me. It's all you know. No, it should um, be. No, because I think that was. I'm glad you shared that story, and yeah. I think we'll be able to get more um, into your IVF through that. This so, well. thanks for joining in, folks. This has been another great episode. <laughs> no, but uh, so when we got married, like we had already again same. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How long did you you guys want to wait before you like you actually had kids? So I think initially we wanted to wait like a year or two. Mm-hmm. Just enjoy um, being married, man. I have always wanted to be a father. Yeah. Wait. Um, like when when you say always, what do you mean by that? Like. When did you know you wanted to be a dad? When I didn't have one. So from like six. No, um, that sounded really dark. Um, it did, man. <laughs> no. Ever since my daddy left. <laughs> um, I mean, I so I've always helped raise my cousins. Mm-hmm. So, um, my cousins lost their dad. He was murdered. Um, but when they were, you know, being born and 
being born when they were born. Um, I, I would come help watch with my nanny and I kind of helped raise a lot of the younger kids in my family. I've always just loved kids. Um, and I just could not wait to be a dad. Like it's always been mm-hmm. one number one thing. Part of it was also like breaking the generational cycle that my yeah, dad, yeah. cause, um, but we initially were going to wait like, yeah, I think one or two years. Was it about one or two years? And, um, we had already talked about, like we had names picked out, um, and everything we, it was like, was it six months in? And we just started talking. We're like, I think we're ready to like, I'm good with whenever. Um, and so then we ended up, um, eventually getting pregnant. Yeah. Um, I remember remember when y'all announced it, I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. A lot of people, some people were shocked. Um, but we were, we were just in a point where we were ready. Um, it was funny. So my wife wanted to like, whenever we got pregnant, tell me in such a surprising way where, um, you know, I'd be shocked or I'd cry or whatever. And so we were actually fighting the day she found out. Like bickering, not fighting. We we were like in that. No, tell her how it is. Y'all I fighting. mean, I was annoyed at her. She hits you, didn't she? She she beats me. <laughs> <laughs> um, anybody who knows Julia knows she's a scrapper. <laughs> Thug life. Um, no, but and I remember we were going over to our friend's house, and I was like, "Hey, I'm just gonna. I'll meet you at our friend's house." Um, mm. And she's like, "No, I need you to come home. I have something for you." So she was out at the store, and when I got home, and I was like, when she said that, I was. I was thinking, okay, maybe she's got like pregnancy test. So I went to where our pregnancy <laughs> pregnancy test drawer was. And I call it that drawer because it had the pregnancy test. It was like sure, a junk drawer sure, in the bathroom. Sure, sure. Um, and they were all gone. And I was like, I was like, okay, I think this is, I look, I looked in the trash can, um, saw the labels and then she had this box for me. And so I had kind of, kind of already figured it out by that point. Um, but she had this cute little box wrapped up. Um, now with the second one, she got me good. Because at this point, she had gotten birth control in between. Um, and then we eventually decided to take birth control out, you know, have a have a second kid. And she... Hold on. Before you get to, to child number two, did the fight end when Julia told you y- y- y'all were expecting? Yeah. Like, it ended, like, right then. Like, okay, fight's over. Or, or was, there, or was, there, was there, there's some stuff she still wanted to get off her chest? It was more me annoyed at her. <laughs> <laughs> Um, she was excited that day and I I, th- I was probably being a jerk. I don't know. I don't remember that. I just remember we were bickering. Um, mm-hmm. But with the second one, we had, you know, just decided whenever when it is whenever. And then it was, we did, we, one year we said, Hey, let's give one gift early for Christmas. And so I gave her something and then she gives me this box. I opened it up and it was the pregnancy test. And I, let me tell you, that's the reaction she wanted. I wept. I bawled. You cried. I did. I, did. Oh, I was so man. excited. <laughs> yeah. I. You know what? Why? Why I hate my life or hate myself sometimes. I. I want to be able to like give the emotional reaction that certain situations are due, and I can't do it. Like on my wedding day, I. I wanted to cry because I felt like I owed it to Emily to cry. Like, when, uh, you, cause there's people like when they walk down, the aisle, one of my good friends, when his wife walked down the aisle, he was, I mean, flow. And I'm like, I, I wanted to be able to do that. Yeah. So I, but like, and then like when she told me that we were going to, I was going to be a dad, I didn't, I wanted to cry, but I was, I was granted, I was happy, but I wanted to like, I wanted to give more than my body was like, I got a to solution give. for you. What? There's this, I recently talked to this guy. And he did this like sound thing. Are you talking uh, about Chris? <laughs> You're so dumb. <laughs> but for real though, like maybe there's some, you know, so I will tell you for me, I was telling someone today, I think it has been years since I've been able to really, I feel like let out a good cry. Oh, I don't think I've ever had a good I cry. I wouldn't say years cause my brother passed. No, I can probably count on my hand, like one hand, the number of times I cried. I, yeah, I just don't feel like I, I used to like. I think I mentioned it in the episodes with Chris. Like I used to be a very sensitive person mm-hmm. and cried a lot, and it takes a lot for me to cry anymore. And a lot of that is because of the walls I built up. Yeah, okay. but I will tell you, like parent, like when when Julia walked down the aisle, I was I was crying, um, not like sobbing, but I mean, I, I wouldn't was, know. I w- I had horrible seats to your wedding. You chose the seats; they weren't assigned. I had horrible. I got, I got, I got there like late. 
The, well, that's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> you knew the time of the wedding. Um, <sighs> no, I, yeah, same thing. So did you cry when your son was born? Oh yeah, man, I did. Gosh, I love that moment. I remember I love, and I was crying that he was born, but I was also crying that I was crying. I was like, I'm crying. This is it. I'm doing it. Like, <laughs> this, is this is what it's like. Yeah, man. Because <laughs> like the birth of my son, we ain't got time to tell the whole story. But like, so the birth of him, the doctors ask, do you want to tell your wife what we're having? Yes. And I said, yes. And she had been in labor for like two hours, like one and a half to two hours. And it was just not going anywhere. And like the real, this is messed up. The real doctor came in and was like, all right, let's do this. And then like literally within like two minutes, it goes from me and like two other folks being in the room to like a team of doctors in here. And that baby's out like this. And so as it's like really coming out, we're like so excited, but like, that's when like the doctors like go to work. They're like, they're just like all this. And as he's popping out and they're like, they flop him over really quick. I don't, I, I don't get to see what, what, what it is. And mm. someone just shouts, Oh, it's a boy. And I'm like, Oh, thanks uh. a lot. Jerk. But in that moment, like, yeah, I wanted to be able to announce it, but like I was just so over the moon, over overwhelmed with emotion, like yeah. it, that it was one because it just we felt like it was just taking forever to get here, and then like that that like release of like he's here, yeah, man, it was kind of funny because like everybody was crying, like Em was crying, obviously she's crying, I'm crying, the doctors are crying, I'm like, what are y'all? This is y'all job, get it together, show some professionalism. <laughs> And they were like, we never cry. And I'm like, what's going on? It was like the sun came out and there were doves flying around the room. It was, it was a really, it was a funny magical moment. Cause like, they're like, this is the seventh kid we've delivered today. Did they know y'all's journey? No, no, no. And the person that was supposed to know the journey, cause we had a uh, doula midwife, midwife. I think it was a midwife. We, we had a midwife that was what Emily wanted. And all the midwives were like out that day that's right so we had like a regular doctor like no shade to like real doctors or real doctors i'm an idiot no, you i know what you we mean. had a we we're supposed to have a midwife you didn't, didn't have happen. a midwife yet. so the midwife knew the journey but the people that were there were just like this is a regular regular birth but let's go on to another question well and i was gonna say props to you because i do not have patience and i could not wait to find out mm. what our kids were we had a big gender reveal for brooklyn which was a girl um that's one of my favorite pictures of me and my wife were you there at that Bro, you I'm, I just became I think, your friend like last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we were that close then, but we did like these confetti um, things, and so you, all the confetti just rained down in front of us, and we're anyways. So we was, might. I don't. I definitely wasn't there for that, but no, we were definitely friends by yeah. then. I think I might have been working or something. Oh yeah, I, you were I, at my I, wedding. Of course, we were friends then. <laughs> I may. I, I may have been like doing something because I, yeah. I, I work a lot. We and then that. with Boston, I was so impatient. I bought this like early test that you can do at eight weeks, like where you had, I, I wasn't supposed to be around it. Julie had to do a little prick and get some blood um, because we had a girl and we really wanted a boy this time. And so then I got the results and I can remember we were at church and I just, I got, I pulled up the phone. I just went and looked over at her and she knew instantly. And so, but we're y'all stopping. Are, y'all are goofy. We're stopping at two, two kids. How many kids do you want total? Two. Two. Yeah. I- do I nah like because I think like do I want more like if I could afford like four what I want for nah, I'm cool you don't too. got four kid money I don't have one kid money <laughs> well I'll tell we so initially we always talked about two mm-hmm. um, once we had um, Brooklyn and once we were pregnant with um, Boston we had talked about maybe in a couple years having another but my wife um, after Boston she had really bad postpartum preeclampsia mm-hmm. um, which actually ended up her getting hospitalized and that can be a very fatal thing. And it was, it's not, fu- that's not funny, but it was funny. So when I took her blood pressure and I realized we had to go to the hospital, I called my mom cause she lived like not too far from us. Mm-hmm. So she could come watch Boston and Brooklyn and I'm running around the house trying to get everything. And my mom gets there and I was like, I'm just trying to make sure Julia stays calm. And she said, Julia, Julia's calm. You're at a 10. <laughs> 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 I was so worried about her. And I'm just like, I was probably making her more anxious, but um, after that, we decided like it was it was probably best not to um, try again just for that's the sake of her. But no, I get it. What is your favorite part about being a parent? <sighs> Looking at him. 
like literally like just looking at him like he is I, I'll, it, it helps that my son is darlingly handsome but like he's pretty cute li- literally just like the f- what was the question your favorite part about being a parent I thought you were going to say that when he looks at you and smiles oh yeah that's the one oh <laughs> my gosh I'm just going to answer time. your questions for you I forgot all about it <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's such a wild it's so cool when he's with his mom and he's crying and throwing a fit or just not really feeling her and I walk in the room and he sees me because he he's got no teeth and he's just Mm -hmm. like he'll like he gets excited yeah kills me but I also like just looking at him like when he's just like because now like he's he's only four months but now we're getting to that thing where like we can kind of play like we're like, I'll play with his hands or legs. And he's like, like he's, he started like, he interact a little bit. He's knowing a little bit what's going on. And like, I can make him smile a little bit. Oh, but man, when he, when he looks at me and smiles, I, I truly could die. I could. Oh, yeah. Gets me every time. What about you? Um, so mine is when, so my favorite thing is when with Brooklyn right now, she did this at church Sunday is when like, she'll be, on the other side of the room and she'll see me and she'll just get the biggest smile on her face and just run daddy, mm. you know, and run into your arms. Like I always couldn't wait for that. But yeah. like, also like what it's just like when they look at you with love or like Brooklyn, she'll come up and she'll just be, I love you and give me a big hug around the neck. And it's just, I just love it. And Boston, he's, he's yeah, he's so cute. I do. You had asked a question earlier about like, um, feeling guilty about having kids. So with Brooklyn, when we got pregnant, we had, some other friends to get pregnant and then some other friends who um, are still trying and they've um, looked at IVF and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. So it was a very hard thing because yes, we were very excited. um, But also our heart hurt and we didn't go around just being like, Ooh, we're pregnant. Like, you know? Yeah. I don't even like, I don't even like, honestly, like I know I post my my son a lot, like, but I, I, I I still feel some type of way about doing it. Cause I'm just like, it's I, hard. I feel like it's I know hard that not there's to. people there's people hurting because mm-hmm. they want kids. Yeah. Uh, and so it's like, you know, I just, what do you do? But, yeah. So that's what I was going to say though. Like I, I, um, I definitely like felt, we've felt the excitement. We're super mm-hmm. excited for us, but also like we still hold hurt for the, you know, the others. Um, I was, the next question is, is how would you describe your parenting style? I mean, you got four months. I don't have a parenting style right now. What do you think? What do you envision? I will say I'm, I'm not, this is, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm a good dad right now. Here's why. Here's why. Don't get me wrong. Like he's four months old. What, what you were supposed to be doing tummy time with him. I don't really do it a lot. I don't do it a lot with him. We didn't either. I, and I know I'm supposed to, uh, I don't, I I do it like maybe like for like five seconds. Does he like tummy time? No. Yeah. Neither did my kids. But you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to yes. ignore the cry. I, I don't like seeing them cry. I don't, no, I, that's I, that, so we I did the same thing. Like M, like M will get home from work and she's like, "Hey, did you do tummy time?" What I'm like, "Yeah, it was real good." I'd be like, Wait, "How long did you do it?" Oh, a couple minutes, and like I may have put him on his stomach like one time for like yeah. a minute. Like the second he just, ah, then I'm like, "All right, <laughs> come here. I'm sorry. Let's, let's, let's get you some milk. Let's get you some milk." Uh, then there's another thing like. I'm boy, I, I'm spoiling him rotten. Like today, literally today, I had him and I let that boy sleep all day. And I I'm I'm pretty sure he's gonna have a rough night tonight, like where he's not gonna sleep a lot. Mm. Cause I had him because I just want him to sleep and be cool and be calm. Like as soon as he wakes up, I so pop play him bo- Fortnite. Yeah. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie about it. Yeah. Like as soon as he wakes up, I pop a bottle right in his mouth. And he'll drink that and then go right back to to sleep. And so, like, I mean, we're up. He plays for like fifteen minutes. I'm like, all right, let's get you to bed again. Let's <laughs> let's go ahead and wrap this up. Daddy wants to play another round of Fortnite. Yeah. I'm real bad about it. So, what's my parenting style like? It, Unres- ir- irresponsible. When you're a new, when you're a new parent parent in that period, it you're tired. And you are so excited for those those breaks when they can sleep. I'm, I'm, I actually want to ask you a question, not like about your parenting style, but um, what is it that you think that you'll do differently than, than your parents did? 
Because this is like, this is not like now they are now. Because they're still like sponges right now. Yeah. But like when they get to be like seven, eight, nine, ten, like when they actually develop like consciousness, personality, all that stuff. Like how would you, how will you parent different than how you were parented? So I've talked some, so there's, a, there's a twofold question. The biggest thing um, is being there. Mm. Um, so I've already kind of mentioned this. My, my biological father, like, yeah. hasn't been a huge part of my life. Um, so the, my past, this past birthday, my wife, or no, it was the birthday, it was my 30th birthday. Mm. My wife had like all my friends and family write letters and she put this book together for me. Right. And, um, lots of them made me like close to tear up, but there is one that I remember vividly like crying at. And it was my sister, Megan, who's on my dad's side. Um, and she said essentially how proud she was cause I had broken the generational curse and how good of a dad I was. Um, and that is my biggest goal That's is that. to bring respect, not respect cause, but back to the McCall name and just really always let them know that they're loved. They're seen, they're heard. Um, you know, I want them to know their feelings are valid, but I also want them to know I'm always there to protect them. I'm never going to leave them. I'm never going to le- leave their side. Um, that's my, that's my biggest goal. That's what's up. That's uh, dope. What about you though? Uh, just what was the question? You're not going to force a b- boy band on him. God, no. What was it? <laughs> how am I going to raise, how am I going to you raise your kids differently? Oh, uh, with love, man. Yeah. No, <laughs> no that's messed up. <laughs> nah. Um, it, it, it's hard to think like, but like, kind of like what you said, like, I want to be present. Like, I just, I just want to be, I, no, 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 I, I wanna, need you to take this. Okay. I just want to be a present dad. Like my father was there. My mother was there, but I just, it's, it's sad, but I just don't remember them being like there for like moments where I feel like they should have been there for like, yeah. meaning my, I feel like my father was only around if I got out of line. Like if it wasn't like band stuff, he wasn't really around. Like if I, you know, did what I was supposed to do in school, as far as academics went, he wasn't really allowed like around. Like if I got like a detention or like bad grades, that's when I remember him like being there. So like, as long as I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, like he didn't like walk in my room and like, Hey, what's going on? How are you? Like who, who tell me about your friends? Like what's your favorite color? You know, I don't, I just don't remember like kind of like those conversations with my dad and or like from my mom like because when my parents split when i was 10 she was gone like she you know i i saw her on weekends so you know she wasn't really around for that and then when i went to go see her on the weekends it was like you know there still really wasn't that kind of like relationship yeah. with that was there um that's not to say that she, they did terrible jobs like i turned out great <laughs> but uh no like i just i i want to try to like not be my kid's friend, but I definitely want to like, no, I yeah. want them to know my dad was here. Like he and was I around. Like, okay for, for, like, want to be their friend too. Yeah. You know, it, it you is, know, at one point you're going to be that like uncool dad. Nah, man, I'm a, I'm, I already know M's going to be the lame parent. I'm going to be the fun. <laughs> I'm fun. Dad. I will say one other thing that me and my wife have always talked about is, um, and this is something kind of for me, like that I would, want to do differently is we never want to fight in front of our kids. So if like we Mm. have a disagreement or something, um, our kids don't need to know about it. Um, where they feel like they have to take sides or anything like it's, we can't disagree. That's okay. If you disagree, that's how you feel. Yeah. But we, um, like I grew up in my mom and dad's relationship obviously was not the best. Mm. And I, I heard all their fights. Mm-hmm. Like I, everything. And I don't regret any of it. I mean, obviously, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't change it, but for my kids, I want, I don't want them to see a division between us. I want them to see a united front. I get um, that. Here's why I disagree. I, I, it, I think it's great that if, I, I think it's great that if you, you know, if you, if kids don't see their parents fight, I don't need this by the way. Uh, well, there's that line on there. I'm not doing that. Uh, I think it's great if kids don't see their parents fight, but I want, it's not here's not it's not to say i want my kids to see me and emily fight i want them to see us have conflict resolution like i think yes. I, I think it's so like if we have a disagreement i don't want them to like see the disagreement but not see the reconciliation and vice versa like if we have a dis- disagreement or something like that and they happen to 
catch wind of it. I want them to see the reconciliation. I want them to see how I get that, how, yeah. how parents solve problems because my parents when they fought it was a it became always became a shouting match and it always ended with my with my mom like walking out of the room like I don't care and just yeah. like slamming a door or whatever. Um, and then Emily, she was like, I don't ever remember my parents fought. Like, like they bickered, that was Julia. She never, but yeah. she never like saw them like make up. And I was just like, oh, like that's not weird. It's just like, yeah, my parents never made up either. But I think it's kind of interesting because like how it translates now. Because like um, Emily and I, we kind of fight weird where I want to like kind of like hash it out there. And she's just like, well, let's just not talk about it. So like it translates over. So I, I want if we fight in front of our kids, I don't mind that. But I if we do fight in front of them, I want I want them to see us like make up like in front of them too. Like I want them to see us like, you know, resolve and like yeah, let's find compromise and middle ground. Stuff like that. I get that. I get that. I um That's why I disagree with you. No, and and I understand that. Like if obviously if we have a disagreement in front of them, our goal is just obviously you can't hide everything. Sure. I mean, as they get older you know, that's a little, that's going to be, they're going to catch on more things, but mm. um, same boat as you as with shouting matches, you know, between the parents and um, you just let them know that if Julia hits you, you deserved it. Like just say, Hey daddy was out of line. That's why, that's why your mom hit me. That's why I got a black eye every other week. <laughs> um, you're not going to talk about it. Cause you said, that's why I handed you the phone, but I thought it was hilarious. The fatherhood bit. No. What are you talking about? you what you regret oh the pancreas thing oh oh yeah so the what, pan- i regret not eating the placenta <laughs> and i what i typed in the notes was the pancreas because when that when at first i was like i mean i regret not eating that pancreas and i was like wait that's not the word for it it's but then the julia screenshotted it to you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah whatever yeah so i'm i'm dumb but no so the placenta it's kind of weird. It's like crunchy. It's, it's the word like for hippie thing or yeah. weird. I well it dries up. Yeah. I I kind of wanted. I kind of wanted it because I, I kind of regret not doing it just just to see what would have happened, what the benefits are to it. I just kind of wanted to see. Have you ever had breast milk? No. I want to try it. I mean, now's the time. <laughs> Duh, but like, <laughs> like we got we, we we got it in stock at the house. <laughs> it's just like, every time I gotta go, like get like hers. She's always like, "Hey, bring me that bottle of breast." Like, oh, it's breast milk in there. I'm always like, ah, I don't want to do it, but I want to try it so bad just to see. I just want to see what it tastes like. But I'm, it's weird. I don't want to because I don't, I, I don't want to try it and like it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> You imagine stealing my kids' milk, man. I don't like, want to do that again, <laughs> honey. Uh, I had some ounces in here, and I just got a milk mustache going on. <laughs> got milk. I don't know what's going on, babe. Gabe's looking over there. He's just gonna be glaring at you, bro. We got four. That's what we got formula for. That's what we got for. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. I was never interested in eating the placenta just because that kind of creeps me out. It does. It creeps me why. out too, but, but I, they can put it in like pill form. Yeah. I, I wasn't going to like take it like a steak, but I just, wanted I mean, to I like, think some people do. I wouldn't have been me. I, I just wanted to barbecue I, it a little bit, put some little, we're getting off topic. Let's, let's close out this episode, bro. Um, what's so weekly segment. That's how you feel. What's your, um, random? did I have a note for it? What it is? <laughs> what does it say? Oh, actually you don't have one today. I don't No. All right. Bet. Cause then I want to actually tack back on to what I said up top about the praises and the people, uh, for you folks that have, I know my, by the time this comes out, my kid will be what? Five months probably by then. Maybe. Yeah. He'll probably be like 10. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, but Hey, uh, to everybody so far that has loved on my son, that has loved on my spouse, that has loved on us as a family, uh, big shout out to you folks that have just been there and just encamped around us and prayed for us. Um, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. You know, it, it may, it, it makes me feel loved. Uh, and that's hard. That's a feeling that's hard for me to accept and receive. So I just want to say if, and if I haven't, if I haven't told you before, <laughs> thank you. So that's my, that's my, that's my praise this week. For I would say segment. it's really nice to hear a praise from you. I don't always got them. So. No, I don't think you hardly ever got them. I don't I always got them. Um, we are getting ready to go to LA, like we talked about. But so I just want to yep. give a shout out to um, my in laws who are going to be watching my two little kids while for a whole week, mm. 
whole week so we can go celebrate our five year anniversary. That's what's up, bro. Yours is coming up November. Ooh. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Anyways, folks, that's that's been the episode tonight. Um Thank you for watching. Thank don't forget for to in. like, comment, subscribe. Also, let us know what you guys want us to talk about. If there's any topics um you want us to touch on, leave them in the comments. Let us know. Shoot us a message. We are open. And we're out of ideas. Thanks for watching, <laughs> folks. Have a good night. <laughs>